Welcome to the fin section of this fintech webinar series. And before we get into the full on fintech scene, I think it's always important to understand how we got here and what the greater context is. Because some of you watching may be familiar with the fintech scene, some of you may not. I know personally, before I moved to San Francisco in 2015, I was not, I was like fintech, fine tech, I had no idea. Fintech describes any company that provides financial services through software or other technology and includes anything from mobile payment apps to digital identity verification to cryptocurrency. Broadly, Fintech describes any company using the internet, mobile devices, software technology, or cloud services to perform or connect with financial services. A lot of the companies that we see here are business to consumer or B2C, which means they're designed to connect consumers' finances with technology for ease of use. For example, if you're in the States, you may use Venmo to send each other money via their app. Uh, you may Venmo each other, and Venmo takes a small cut every time a customer pays with a credit card. There are also fintechs out there selling in a purely business-to-business -business or B2B fashion. Paystack, for example, is a Nigerian startup recently acquired by US-based fintech Stripe for $200 million. Paystack provides online payment facilities to merchants via an API and a few lines of code. And we'll come back to APIs in our tech section of this webinar in a little bit. But really, the most talked about and the most funded fintech startups share the same characteristic. They are designed to be a threat to, challenge, and eventually usurp entrenched traditional financial services providers like big banks by being more nimble, serving an underserved segment of the population, or providing a faster and or better service. Fintechs will continue to disrupt in the coming years, but industry analysts see a larger focus now and going forward on sustainability and financial inclusion. So from a jobs perspective, this means that there's a real need for diversity and inclusion inside fintechs and tech companies to ensure that the products we're building address the needs of an ever wider customer base coming with varying cultural backgrounds, levels of literacy and numeracy, norms and languages. A few months ago, I did another webinar for a London-based STEM organization, Your Future, Your Ambition, and that webinar series was called The Tech Industry from Startups to Apps, How You Can Get in the Game, uh, which will also be available on this SaaS Savvy YouTube channel. And what I aimed to answer in that lecture was, what is the tech industry? Because it's this massive umbrella term for a whole bunch of technology and sectors and companies. FinTech itself is a sector of the broader tech industry. And in a similar way that we started that tech industry webinar asking ourselves uh, the same question, what is tech? What counts as tech? And when did this all get started? We can do the same with the FinTech industry. Is financial technology a recent development with the dawn of software engineering? Or can we think of this in several different iterations, if you will, as well? And you bet. So if we throw it far back enough, we can think of one of the world's first financial technologies as the development of money itself. We moved from systems of bartering to the world's first minted coin in Lydia, which of course is the snazzy name for a consumer to consumer payments app in France. Um, and Lydia was part of ancient Turkey. And this uh, came out in 600 BC. And then in 800 BC, we see the Chinese make money moves with the first evidence of cold, hard paper cash. But for time's sake, we're gonna jump forward about 2000 years to when FinTech really starts taking off steam, if you will, or picking up steam. So we're in the 1860s, the industrial revolution is in full swing and the world's first transatlantic cable is laid down for the sending of telegraphs. And you can really think of this as the precursor to those fiber optic cables on the ocean floor today that supply the world with hyperspeed internet. Um, so along with railroad and steamships, messages start flying around the world. And towards the late 19th century, we turned the telegraph into a vehicle for money transfers. So once a sender had paid money to one telegraph office, the operator could transmit a message and wire the money to another office. Then in the post-World War II area, sorry, era, as we start our push, first push towards all things cashless, ATMs replaced tellers and branches, uh, and a magnetic stripe on the back of a card revolutionized the credit card industry and started to really reduce the need for cash. 
So then we move into this era where fintech goes from analog to digital. Uh, we see the arrival of NASDAQ, the digital stock exchange, alongside the BAC and SWIFT protocols for sending bank-to-bank uh, -bank and international payments. In the digital revolution of the 1980s, the Bloomberg terminal is uh, using software to pave the way for real-time financial market data analysis. And big mainframe computers were developed to provide all of the processing power for all the services a bank provides. Again, everything from checking accounts to investments. Um, and we see data and record keeping systems getting more and more sophisticated. And then of course comes the dawn of the internet uh, and e-commerce and online banking and everything that comes along with it, specifically smartphones, the first of which debuted just a year or so before the 2008 financial crisis. And this brings us into uh, a really pivotal moment for the fintech industry in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, because of what happened, there was a huge rejection of the traditional banking system, a lack of trust in banks, and banks stopped lending. Um, additionally, you had a bunch of highly educated, very experienced financial services professionals who knew about compliance, regulation, and uh, big gaps in the industry. Um, and these people lost their jobs and decided to start companies. And they were able to do this much, much more easily than they ever had been able to do in the past, because at the same time, we see this mass influx in tech startups with the rise of the cloud and things like Amazon Web Services, which make it much easier to start companies without massive capital investment into physical hardware that you would need to run uh, and produce things like software applications. So right now uh, we're in this area of FinTech 2.0, 3.0, depends on which industry analyst you ask, um, but we're seeing now the rise of blockchain and cryptocurrencies emerging, uh, things like GameStop really shows the power of fintech in the internet community. Um, and as I said earlier, we are seeing going into the future, a focus on financial inclusion and a pivot towards really reshaping the infrastructure and processes at the core of the financial services industry and specifically fintech. So I know at this point in this uh, webinar series, the history of fintech that I've told has been rather US centric, but fintech is a global reaching industry concept and future. And just like in the broader tech industry, fintech is going down all across the world. In the last five years, emerging markets are leading the way in terms of fintech adoption with China and India seeing the most growth in the sector. Stripe was founded out of Ireland, M-Pesa out of Kenya, Israel is killing the cybersecurity game, Ali everything out of China, big things are happening everywhere.